Welcome back. I'm here with three of the five members of the 2016 SEMA Championship Engine Building Team. I'm Jonathan Miranda. I'm Enrique Cruz. And I'm Andy Wynn. These guys have been coming in on Monday nights to give some assistance and some advice to the newest engine building team. Welcome, Welcome to, to this, this week's, week's episode, episode of Bulldog, Bulldog Builds. Builds. I'm installing the timing gear backing plate with a new gasket. As Kevin did before with the oil pump screen a couple of weeks ago, he's using the bolster on the screwdriver to apply more torque to the flathead screws. Now I'm installing the crank gear. Now I'm installing the camshaft. We've got a film of oil in the cam bearings, just as with the mains and rods, we don't want to have a dry start on any of the metal components. I'm tightening the retainer that controls camshaft end plate. Kevin's using a seal puller to pull the front cover seal out. We're going to replace it with a new one before putting it on the engine. Now he puts the new seal in. All right, that brass screw looking piece that you're looking at uh, actually feeds oil to the timing gear. So you see that little hole there at about three o'clock. Um, as the engine is running, it gets oil pressure from behind it, kind of like a jet in a carburetor. And then it sprays oil directly onto the gear and then it will lubricate both gears uh, as the engine's running. To ensure that we have perfect valve timing, the dots on the crank and cam gears should be in line. To finish the job, I'm installing the timing cover and gasket. The timing cover bolts on this engine, like a lot of the fasteners, are flathead screws. Um, and they do need to be torqued just like any other fastener. And this is a screwdriver type torque wrench. Uh, never been used. We've had it in that box since 1997. And I think we figured that that's six years before Kevin was even born. Uh, but he's going to be the first one to use this thing uh, so that we can torque these bolts correctly as well. But I just wanted to uh, just share this with you because I think a lot of people don't even know this thing exists. Uh, but they do actually make torque uh, wrenches for screws as well. So it just tightens it like a normal screw until it clicks and he's reached his torque.
the scanner is showing two lean codes from the O2s. Those codes are indicative of an air intake leak. We took the induction system off of the truck to better check for leaks. Everything here checks out, so we're reinstalling it. The students did a good job of checking this truck out and with no hard faults and no issues in the induction system, I called one of my past graduates, Tyler James, who's a Ford technician, to see if there were any TSBs on this. Uh, and he said it was most likely an ethanol issue with some of the gas. Uh, and he told me a test that I could do with this, but since we know that this vehicle was actually taken on a trip down south when it came back and that's when it was, uh, had the check engine light problem, uh, that it's more than likely was fuel related. So we're going to give it back to the customer, let him drive it for a couple of days locally, getting the fuel at the same stations that he's always gotten it from, uh, and see if the problem comes back. These headlight brackets that I have are for a 40 millimeter fork. My forks are 41 millimeter, so I'm having to adjust them slightly so that they fit. I have tape on the bracket to protect the chrome. I'll get some hardware to mount them so they look like new. I picked up this 1980 KZ1000, New Year's Day. Um, got a smoking deal on it. Some people say that I stole it for the price I paid, even though it does have a crack in the case right above the Kickstarter. Uh, but for now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but it's going to go into storage with the rest of them, and I'll make that decision later. With the engine out, we're going to put in a new water pump and a tensioner pulley before we put the engine back to the car. Audi has the new O-ring gasket in place for the water pump, and now he'll install it onto the engine. I'm talking the water pump bolts to 108 inch pounds. Sorry, I missed that. Could you say it again, please? <laughs> I might put that in. <laughs> I'm talking the water pump bolts to 108 inch pounds. You can see this tensioner pulley is still spinning. It shouldn't spin more than one and a half to two times with grease in it, but this one clearly is dry, so we're going to replace the, uh, this idler as well. With the new pulley installed, you can see it only spins one and a half to two times, so this uh, engine is now ready to go back into the car. With the engine pretty closely aligned, they lower the car down onto the engine so we can get it fastened back into the mounts. Looking good. I'm ready to get back to work on that 23 Fordson tractor to get the last two pistons put in and I need to make uh, a few more shims to get our clearance correct. Uh, you've seen us do this before. Uh, I think we, for the 48 Chevy we used a Dr. Pepper can to make the shims. I'm using a Mug Root Beer can. Uh, so cutting the top off of it and you can just take a pair of regular scissors and cut the aluminum can just fine. So we'll get this cut up. I'll trace one of the original shims twice so I can put that on one of the connecting rods and then we'll check the clearance again. And we'll continue doing that until we get the clearance correct on the last two pistons. Now it doesn't have to be perfect when you're doing this, it just has to have the basic shape. The hole needs to be the correct size for the stud. But... Alright, so there's my shape. 
get that cut out. Make two of these, like I said, uh, and then we'll put that on and check clearance. So kindergarten wasn't a total waste of time. It taught me to use scissors to cut shapes, which has come in handy to make shims for our tractor block. This is something else you've seen us do as well. We're gonna knock a hole in the shim by using the cap uh, and the ball end of our ball peen hammer. So it's by lightly tapping the area of the hole, cuts the sharp edge. right out of our shim. See it cuts a nice perfect hole in our mug root beer can and that'll be a good shim for us to use and I'm gonna make one more. We'll put it in and see what the clearance is. You see I got a plastic gauge there on the journal as well as our root beer can shims. So now I'm gonna put the connecting rod on, get it torqued down, remove it and see how much clearance we have. You can see from the scale that we've got about 2000s clearance so that's what we're going with. Uh, so now I just need to get this all cleaned off, get the cap on and torqued, then I can move on to the last one, and then we can get these all wire tied. I've got one more piston to put into the Fortson tractor block. Once that's in, we'll check the clearance on the journal, make whatever shims we need to make, uh, and then I'll take care of that, and then we can get busy on the front end of the engine. It's been a while since we've done one of these. You can see the oil control ring is below the pin on this particular engine, so we'll have to compress this one separately, get it installed, then we can compress the two compression rings and get the piston the rest of the way in, uh, and then we can finish up doing the, uh, the journal clearance. All right, I've got the ring compressor on. We'll get it uh, compressed pretty tight there. Make sure it's seated tight to the block. Let's see if we can knock her through. There we go. Now we'll release the compressor. I've got the ring compressor moved up to the compression rings now. We're gonna give those Squeeze those pretty tight. Make sure that the ring compressor is tight against the block again. I already have a film of oil in the cylinder, by the way. So we'll take and give this a good sharp hit. And the piston's in. And we'll knock it down through the rest of the way until it gets onto the journal, and then we'll start checking our clearance. I've already used up all the shims that originally came with this engine. That's why you saw me making some shims for the number three rod earlier. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make two shims for this one now because I don't think we're gonna get away with just putting the cap on there. I'm not even gonna to bother to check. So I'm gonna make two shims for this one, put it on, get some plastic gauge, uh, and then see what the clearance is from there. And measuring this one, I'm a little bit under two thousandths of an inch, so I'm gonna make two more shims because I'd like a little more clearance on this one. You can see this one's right at about two thousandths of an inch. Uh, it's actually a little above it, so about closer to two and a half maybe, which is good for our clearance for this journal. Now we just get this cleaned up, get the cap on it, get everything safety wire, and then we can move on to the next phase. As we said, Jonathan, Enrique, and Andy are here to offer some assistance to the team. Oh, my first one is Go guys, come on, come on! With the two practice runs over, the guys spend some time with them, teaching them some things that might help pick up their times. Next time on Bulldog Builds, we should have more of that 48 Chevy engine put together. We should also have the engine for the Honda Civic put in place. And we'll have a little more work done on that Fortune tractor. See you next week.